Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we have the brand new Tier 8 Premium Italian aircraft carrier, the Aquila, in port to review for you guys today. As always, a massive shout out to the channel's Patreons as they made this review along with all ship reviews on this channel possible. I am not a CC, nor supported by Wargaming in any way, shape, or form. So all these ships that I have on the channel to review are provided by the funds from these generous Patreons. Patreon is the best way to support the channel, besides of course just watching the videos and streams. If you wish to do so, link to that is in the description down below. Again, massive shout out to those guys. And now on to the review. So the Aquila, the Tier 8 Italian aircraft carrier. Now this is a real, still, historical ship. This ship was really built and almost finished by the Italian Navy, the Regia Marina, in the Second World War. What ha happened was um, Mussolini wasn't actually too concerned with building an aircraft carrier for the Navy. As, well, I mean, if you look at Italy, it sticks out into the Mediterranean Sea. And, well, I mean, why do you need an aircraft carrier when your country juts out halfway into the Mediterranean? And if you control that, along with uh, Italy's other imperial ambitions, like the northern coast of Africa and much of the Mediterranean coast, basically, you know, again, uh, Mussolini's pipe dream of rebuilding the Roman Empire, y you don't need an aircraft carrier because your land-based aircraft can easily cover all of the Mediterranean. So why do we even need to worry about that? That's why it wasn't a high priority for much of the war. But then as the war raged on and the obviously the um, war took its course and carriers became more and more prominent, the decision was made that it was time for Italy to get its own aircraft carrier. And originally this hull started out life as an ocean liner, the SS Roma, oddly enough. Uh, the hull was then converted into what was going to be a support carrier, but then uh, later on the decision, decision was made to make it into a whole fleet carrier carrying around 51 aircraft like you see here. So the uh, ship was then constructed in, well, very much what you see here. The engines were replaced with engines that, that made instead of 20,000 horsepower, somewhere along the lines of 121,000 horsepower. Um, Overall, though, the ship was, since it was an ocean liner, it wasn't very well armored, and not a whole lot of armor was really increased. They did pour about, I think, 8 centimeters worth of cement into the, um, into the, I think, the ballast tanks, or somewhere along the lines of the exterior bulges of the ship, to try and help with, uh, trying to give it some type of armor, but uh, as we'll talk about here, that, that much of it is very much reflected in game and i believe the aquila was around like 85 90 percent complete almost to the same level of the graph zeppelin graph zeppelin was like 95 percent complete it was really just waiting on uh its aircraft and i think the final testing and, and uh finalization of i think it's catapults when uh the war ended but anyway uh, aquila was almost done then italy surrendered and rather than be taken by the Germans, well, first off, it got bombed by the Allies before that. The Germans tried to take her, uh, but then the Italians sent in their own frogmen to, well, scuttle the ship, and scuttle she was. She was later raised after the war in the 1950s, and Italy thought about completing her, but the decision was made to just scrap her, and in 1952, she was scrapped. But in World Warship, she is here today, fully playable. She's out now for the price of 12,500 doubloons, which is normal tier 8 cost of a premium, about $48, $49 US. And you can buy her right now for that much. At the moment, she's not available for any other currency, not for coal, steel, or anything else. Just good old fashioned doubloons or dollars. So, the Aquila. Um, I know a lot of players don't like CVs and CV bad, but like, look. This is a historical ship, it really exists in real life, and I think it's very neat that we get to see this ship in game. Just like all the host of battleships and cruisers and destroyers that were either never completed or just drawn up or uh, didn't really have a long service life in real life, it's cool that we get to see them in game. I think it's cool that we get to see the Aquila in game as well. And if you don't like CVs, you actually might like this one. And we'll get to more on that in a second. If you do notice, I do have some XP on the ship. We did play the ship a bit on stream uh, last night. And yeah, 
I have many things to say about this ship, but let's go ahead and look at her stats and characteristics. We'll go through all that here in port, look at her modules, her consumables and such, and then we'll jump into a gameplay review of the ship while I'll give the ship a score. But let's go ahead and look at its quirks and features with the Aquila Tier 8 Italian CV. So, um, the ship does come with the standard permanent economic boost for a tier 8 ship. You get 5% boost to your credits, 50% boost to your ship XP, commander XP, and free XP. Uh, these are just the second tier green boost that I have a bagillion of that I run on most of my premium ships because uh, I farm all these all these uh, resources for when I need them for ship reviews and the like. Um, the camouflage that you get with the ship is this one right here. This is what you get with her. There's no alternative for it just yet. I like it. The ship itself looks beautiful. Uh, the Italians could certainly build ships and make them look pretty in the 40s and 50s. And even today with some of the cruise liners that the Italians build, they look absolutely fantastic. really like the way the ship looks. Very sleek. Has lots of nice, nice curves. It's a very nice looking boat. Alright. So, for her armor... Uh, yeah, <laughs> ain't really got none. You have a 19. It, it's all 19. It, the flight deck's 25. Everything else is 19. The superstructure is 13. Everything is 19, and I, I do mean everything is 19. Like, look at this. That's its citadel. Its citadel bulkhead is 19 millimeters. Now, up here it's 30 millimeters. Then the roof is 80. But literally everything else is 19 millimeters. And look at that citadel too. Like, sure, you, you've got these chunks that drop down in front of it, but it's it's still just 19 millimeters of armor. Actually, you don't really have that that jump that drop down in front of it because there's the bulkhead right there. You do have the torpedo protection that does go over it, so you maybe have a little bit of spaced armor effect going on there, but with this thin of an armor at tier 8, it, 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 don't get shot. Don't get shot. That I can tell you from experience, don't get shot on this thing. You're not bouncing anything unless it hits your flight deck and it can't overmatch it, but just don't get shot because you have no armor. It gives a CV if you're getting shot at. There, some things have probably gone sideways. Hit points, you have 51,100 hit points, 13% torpedo damage reduction. Now the aircraft, you only have two squadrons in this thing. They're both the same aircraft. You get the good old RE-2001s here. And you get a flight of attack, of attack aircraft, which fire short fuse AP rockets with a very low arming threshold. And then you have the torpedo planes. First, the attack planes. So these planes, there's no modules nor commander skills applied to take all my modules off, along with the signal flags as well. So these planes have 1,030 hit points each. Their base cruising speed is 169. Their top speed is 209 with the engine boost. Their engine boost lasts for 5 seconds. It reloads in 10 seconds. You get 5 planes per attack run. And you get 10 planes per squadron, so you get two attack runs of five planes each. And these planes have a base region time of one unit every 58 seconds. That's base. That's pretty good. And these are detected from 10 kilometers away. Now here we go with the uh, the rockets. Each plane gets 12 rockets. <laughs> so you are dumping in the neighborhood of 70 rockets every attack run with this aircraft. That's um. It's a little much, not 70, 60 rockets every attack run with one run of these planes. Got a little bit of FDR-isms going on here. And the rockets do a maximum damage of 1,150. It is quite low, but you're throwing 60 of them at a target. That's a potential damage um, of upwards of 60,000 damage per run. Potentially, of course. And, yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's something to witness. And again, we'll talk more about that in the gameplay review section. The torpedo bombers are, again, they're the same plays the RD 2001s. These have a little bit more health at 1,150 HP. They travel at 169 knots with a boost of up to 204 knots. But their engine boost lasts for 20 seconds and reloads in 40 seconds. And you have two planes in an attacking flight, six planes per squadron. So you get three attack runs of two planes and 18 of these aircraft on deck. These planes regenerate around one unit every 68 seconds space. And again, they are detected from 10 kilometers away. And these boys drop one torpedo each. So you get two torpedoes per attack run and you get one torp each per plane. 
these torpedoes do a maximum of 7,133 damage. So combined, you're doing a little over 14,200 damage per run if you, again, don't hit any torpedo protection. And the torpedoes travel at 30 knots, have a 3.5 kilometer range, and arm in 403 meters. Pretty short arming range. And that's it. That's your planes. No bombers, no skip bombers, no sap bombers. Although I guess the um, AP on the rockets is probably as close to sap rockets as we're going to get short of them actually being added into the game. And more on the aircraft in the gameplay review section. Alright, so for your secondary guns, you get 8 of these 135mm guns. They reload in 10.7 seconds. They have a maximum range of 6.6 .6 kilometers. They do not fire a sap, which would have been neat. They fire a chi. They do have, they, they do have the ability to pin up to 23mm, which is almost good enough to actually, you know, do something. But they don't. <laughs> they do maximum damage of 1,950. They have a 9% chance of causing a fire on the target. And they come up the tubes at 875 meters a second. So, yeah, we were very close. If they'd maybe given these things sap shells and extended the range out to 10 kilometers, that might would have made it interesting, but they, uh, they didn't. So, yeah. AA, this is where, uh, I don't know what happened here. So, you get 22 of these sextuple-mounted 20-millimeter guns. That's a lot. And then you get 12 of these single-mounted 65mm guns. Alright. But there's no flak. This thing doesn't shoot flak. At all. Get 354 continuous damage in your sector. And the priority sector reinforcement is up to 35%. Since there's no flak guns, your AA range is only 3.7 kilometers on a carrier. So that is correct. This CV has less... AA range than most of the Italian ships. Even the Italian DDs have at least 3.7 kilometers of range. So this carrier has the same range as the DDs in the line. I, I okay, okay. Like I get it. No, this is how it was designed and completed. But m many ships, after they would, you know, launch this stuff, they would bolt more AA onto it. But I, I guess not. I guess not. So yeah, th this is a CV. That has no armor, that basically has no AA. Th this is, yeah, makes it prime time targets for other CVs. So, yeah. Alright, so maximum speed is 30 knots, which makes it the, I think, second or third fastest CV at tier 8. She has a turning circle race of 950 meters and a rush of 12.9 seconds. And her base concealment is 13.4 kilometers. For her consumables, I mean, you have the automatic repair party, and uh, yeah, the automatic damage control party, and then the automatic fighters, and that's it. The torpedo planes get the engine boost, and the patrol fighters, the engine boost lasts for 5 seconds, reloads in 80 seconds, you get 4 charges of those base. Uh, the patrol fighters are active for 60 seconds, you get 5 fighters, it's a 3 kilometers radius, these reload in 10 seconds, you get 4 of those. Um, the torpedo bombers, they get engine boost, same thing, 5 seconds, 80 second reload time, but you get 2 charges here with the torpedo bombers. Fighters, 60 seconds, 5 fighters, 3 kilometer range, 10 second reload time, 4 consumable space, same. But you do get a heal with the uh, torpedo planes, they regenerate 10% of the aircraft's HP, it's active for 5 seconds, reloads to 180 seconds, and you can get 3 charges base. Alright, so that's it for the Aquilas stats and characteristics so we're going to go ahead now and slot that commander on there and i'll meet you guys right back here all right for the commander i went with air supremacy to bring that aircraft prep time down even more then i went with repair specialist to give us a longer action time on that um heal for the torpedo plane to get an additional charge for the torpedo planes then i went with aircraft armor to reduce the amount of damage that we take from AA by 10%. Then I went with Enhanced Aircraft Armor to reduce the damage from AA shells by 25%. Then Survivability Expert, which increases the HP for the aircraft by your tier, with 25 hit points per tier. Then I went with Improved Engines, which improve the speed by 2.5% for the squadrons. Then I went with Proximity Fuse, which gives us a 10% 
well, an ability to ignore 10% of tor anti torpedo protection. And then Swift Fish to increase the torpedo speed by 5%. For the module build, I went with Air Groups Mod 1, which increased the speed of the returning squadrons by 20%, so we get our cycle time down faster. And with Aircraft Engines Modification 1, that gives us a 10% boost to the squadron's engines. Then with Torpedo Bombers Mod 1, to give us 5 seconds to the Torpedo Bombers attacking time. Then with Torpedo Bombers Mod 2, which increased the Torpedo Bombers HP by 7.5%. And then with Flight Control Mod 1, which decreases the, air, the prep time for the aircraft by another 5% and gives us two more aircraft of each type on deck. So now the planes, the rocket planes cruise at 173 knots. They have maximum speed of 214 knots and 1,230 hit points per plane. And they regen now in 52 seconds, which is very nice. For the Torpedo Bombers, they now have 1,436 hit points. They speed at, well, they speed, they fly at 173 knots. They have a maximum speed of 209 knots. And their engine boost lasts for 22 seconds now, reloads in 40 seconds. And now the Torpedoes travel at 32 knots. Oh, and these planes now regen in 61 seconds. Alright guys, so that's the build. I'm running on the Aquila, and I ran on the Aquila for the games I played on stream. So I'm going to go ahead and catch you guys in a gameplay voiceover review now. Alright guys, voiceover Mountbatten here. So, I'm not going to lie. When I was first reading over the stats of this ship, you can go watch it on the, uh, the VOD for Friday Night's live stream. This was my general reaction toward the Aquila. Buongiorno. <laughs> on paper she has the lowest hp of planes by far at tier 8 which makes my graf zeppelin very happy she only has two types of planes that the carry itself is I wouldn't even call it a, a damage pinata because you shoot it once or twice and it's just dead, really. It, it's very rare to actually escape in this ship, given how squishy it is. You have to dump so many modules and commander points into the planes to have a build to make them even remotely viable, even at tier 8, that you don't really have any extra points or uh, modules to, you know, maybe bring down the carrier's concealment a little bit. You, you you really don't. And keep in mind too, I should have said this, said this at the start of the video, but I'll say it here because this is the you know the actual review portion. I'm not the world's best carrier player. Um, I'm, I'd, I'd like to say I'm better than just outright Terabad. Don't get me wrong, like I'm still not very good, but I don't think I'm atrocious anymore. I've gotten a little bit better at carriers, but I'm, I'm far from I'm not the person you go to for CVs, you know, on YouTube. I'm the one you go to for, for battleships and stuff. So I like to say I'm a, a, probably a little bit below average CV. I'm, I'm decent in the Graf Zeppelin. It's actually the only CV I have good stats in, ironically. But I have a much firmer grasp with them than I did, let's say, a, a year ago, obviously. So that out the way. After I played this ship for a while, though, she really started to grow on me, which was very strange. Because, again, on paper, this ship should be terrible. Like, just abysmal. But, in game, she's not that bad, surprisingly. Now, am I going to say this is the best tier 8 CV? Uh, no. No, 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 no. It is not the best tier 8 CV. That's the Kaga. <laughs> okay? But, the worst? Mm, that's a bit of a tricky question to answer. So let's talk about the Aquila. So, by far, the planes you are going to be relying on for good, consistent damage are your torpedo planes. It's very weird what they did here with the squadrons. They don't seem to really be trying out anything new for maybe a potential upcoming Italian CV line. Because what we essentially have here is a slightly toned down version of the Hakuru torpedo planes. You know, two torpedoes with a, a good reticle. The, the reticle for the torpedo planes is very good. Once you get it, 
um, charged up all the way or lined up all the way, whatever you want to call it. The torpedoes go just straight ahead. They don't spread out. They don't spread in. They just go straight ahead. So, you know, they're going to go where you direct them to go. And yes, they are slow, but if you lead them appropriately, and once you get used to leading slow torpedoes, they hit, and they connect, and they're doing, like, again, 14,200 plus alpha damage with these torpedoes. So if you, if you pick your targets wisely, you know, if there's a, a German battleship or some other ship with poor torpedo protection that you know you can hit, you can go kick them quite a few times until they just sink with the torpedo planes. And the torpedo planes are very fast. You have that nice, very long 20-second engine boost time. Then you even have the... Uh, the boost consumable on top of that too that does make up for their speed well i'm sorry that does make up for their lack of armor their, their speed makes up for their lack of armor and hp it's kind of like how the graph zeppelin was when she was originally originally introduced and generally how like the german aircraft carriers or they have faster planes for their tier to compensate for their very low hp pull same here with the aquila and what's really, really good with the Aquila is that once you get into a position where you have a nice cycle rate, meaning that you're close enough to the battlefield to where you don't have, you're not having to fly for like a minute or two to get to your targets, that's when this thing really shines because your ability to just, you know, here's some torpedo planes and then here's some rocket planes, here's some torpedo planes, here's some rocket planes is very, very, very strong once you get into that aspect of it. Now, you do only drop two torpedoes, so of course dropping from the front or from the back is going to be a bit more difficult than a ship like the Graf Zeppelin or the Enterprise or, you know, in, any ship that drops more than two torps because, you know, you don't have that torpedo, so there's torpedoes in the middle of the spread to, you know, potentially force the ship to sell into. But the torpedoes, they're good, good consistent damage. You have the heal on these planes too, so when you are going against ships that are of a higher tier. These are typically the planes you're going to want to send at them. I would definitely pre-drop the first one out of the squadron because, again, these planes have so little health that unless you're going after, like, a lone Bismarck or Tirpitz or some poor ship that doesn't have very good AA, you're probably not going to be able to get a second strike off. So that's the torpedo planes. Definitely your main source of damage. I'm using these a lot. The regenerate with the build that I'm running, I never run out of these planes. With pre-dropping the first squadron and just using the two, never run out of planes. And that's with me playing, okay? And some of you are probably cringing at my gameplay right now. I see you typing in the comments section already, too. Never run out of these planes. Alright, so the other planes. <laughs> the short fuse AP short threshold rocket planes. What are these? These might be what they're looking at messing with when it comes to the Italian CV line, if they're even thinking about doing an Italian CV line. This is a little bit of FDR in this carrier. That's what I was talking about earlier, how they're not really, don't seem to be trying anything for the Italian CV line, this should be the only thing I, I would see they're maybe trying, because this is essentially, you know, FDR rockets. You know, you, you throw a crap ton of rockets at them that do a low damage amount, but if you hit most of them, you'll be chunking ships quite hard with these, but unlike the FDR that can start fires, um, these can't, because they're AP. Now, what you want to do with these is find some battleship with a large superstructure or some light cruiser and make them cry. Now, these are very tricky to use because you have to have a flat broadside for these to work. If you've used AP rockets, you know that. You can't fire them at a bow in or angled ship because they're going to bounce or, you know, miss. But when you can find the broadsides of enemy ships, these rockets do like in just a superstructure mind you like at least 8k to superstructures or the extremity so like the bow the stern of a uh, tier 8 and above battleships but if you chuck someone in the superstructure with these you're going to be doing like um shoots i had a couple of salvos that were like 12k to um the what was it yeah the conqueror obviously british bb you know lots of squishy armor um, I think I did 13k to an FDG. Yeah, it was an FDG. You know, big superstructure, lots of stuff to pin there with the, with the AP rockets. But what's really interesting is when you come across something that's really lightly armored, like a light cruiser, or even like you're probably seeing now in the game you're watching in the background, a British battle cruiser. 
if you notice too, these things have an absurdly high attack angle. They're almost firing into the deck, which is why I assumed they wouldn't really be able to do this unless it was something, you know, like a stupid light cruiser like, you know, uh, um, an Atlanta or a San Diego or the Ramat here. But I was getting citadels on the, uh, what was it, the Rook, the Tier 7 British Battle Cruiser, which is, you know, thinly armored. So I figured, okay, I'll be able to ch chunk, you know, chunk his deck and his superstructure and his sides, but apparently I can chunk it enough to citadel the, the guy. Now, granted, if you do look at the damage I'm doing, it's not like I'm erasing him from existence. I'm getting, you know, good chunks out of it, 10k plus, easy. But, again, not ruining their day like you might do with, like, MVR's um, AP rockets against, like, a broadside MOSFA or something. Which, again, it's very strange how steep these planes are attacking and how short their fuse and how short their army threshold is, yet they're still penetrating enough into a battle cruiser to get Citadel damage off on off on um on it so yeah it's it's weird it, it's it works really well when it works but when it doesn't work it uh it doesn't work well at all the these ap rockets now they do have a very short um fire delay it's only two points i think 2.5 2.65 seconds between you clicking the button and the planes attacking on like the five seconds of the he rocket so you got that going for you there that does mean you can actually hit dds with these pretty darn hard too um i tried a couple of times and it's doing like six seven k to dds which is good really good but again you gotta find them broadside they have to sail long enough for you to hit them broadside you gotta lead them enough but if it's like a dd that's you know hugging an island like an american dd where a dd that's hugging an island try not to be detected in a cap you find their side you'll remove again six seven eight k from a dd which you know at tier eight that's in some cases you know half or a third of dd's health so it's pretty good there but obviously where the shortcomings of the planes manifest themselves is of course the hp because even with all these modules and all these commander skills into making the planes tankier, giving them more HP, they still get shot down quite a lot. And with the AP rocket planes, I, I couldn't really pre-drop because you do need a majority of your planes to get through with the AP rockets to really be doing any significant amount of damage with them. So you can't pre-drop the first flight because there goes your you know your buffer flight and then you're going to start losing planes in your attacking flight and you're losing 12 rockets every time you lose a plane so yeah so it's it's a little bit more difficult to use these rocket planes and they aren't super rewarding like again like the mvr's rocket planes are where you can you know remove like a third of its cruiser's health in one go even landing the majority of, the, of these rockets you know like 40 rockets 50 rockets you're still, unless you know you're you, you're getting like a, a a god roll with RNG with the dispersion of the rocket, still maybe doing 10k, which again isn't bad, but it's considering you only have two squadrons, and this is one of them, a very very dependent squadron, a very very dependent on the current situation squadron. You have to have the right ships you can chunk. They have to not be paying attention. They have to not turn during your firing del delay, which again is only two point. Six five seconds, but still, they have to keep selling straight. You gotta hit them in their side for these to do very, very well. Um, now, when I was playing this on stream, a couple players saying you know, they're only effective against light cruisers. Eh, I, I got some pretty good hits and citadel hits on them against uh, the new French battle cruisers, citadel hits on, on the breast. Um, Hipper, it's not really saying much, you know, that I said on the Hipper, but it is a heavy cruiser. It does have thick armor. So, you, yeah, these are difficult to use. Gotta find the right target. They gotta not be paying attention. But when they do hit, yeah. <laughs> so that brings me to my final conclusion. I would give the Aquila a 5 out of 10. Now, do keep in mind, 5 means average. It's the middle of the, of the scoreboard here. And that sums up Aquila pretty well. I don't think she's a terrible CV. I don't think she's a bad premium per se. But there's just several others I would recommend players get before her. Certainly as a first time CV player. This is not a CV that you go pick out if you haven't played any of the tech lines beforehand. I wouldn't recommend you do that with any ship or any class in this game. You should definitely play tech lines first. But if you're looking for a premium CV as your first one, I would say it's it's a pass. 
Hornet's a much more attractive CV than this one. You can actually use the Hornet to, you know, train your American CV commanders. There isn't an Italian CV line yet, so Aquila isn't really useful for that. But yes, yeah, she's middle of the road for me. And this really surprised me because I really thought, looking at her stats, this is a, a CV or a ship that I'm going to give like a, a 3 out of. A 3 out of 10 score to. But surprisingly not. It's, it's pretty middle of the road. It can hold its own in tier 8 games. And we had, again, some very surprising games in this ship on stream. Now, none of them were like super good or anything, but when I played this ship on stream, even in the tier 10 matches, I was joining the top three um, on my team side. Surprisingly so, in a CV, of all things. Me in a CV, of all things, too. So that's kind of surprising. What really saves this ship is the, the, the torpedo bombers. They're such good, consistent damage once you get them down. And the rocket planes, they're great for bullying light cruisers that aren't paying attention, or getting those DDs that are hugging islands, or, or sitting still, or not paying attention to. And even, again, against some lighter-armed larger ships, like Royal Navy battle cruisers, the new French battle cruisers, even some heavy cruisers, apparently, too. So the pros of the Aquila or her torpedo planes, good, consistent damage. 14,000 plus alpha damage per strike on the torpedo planes. Both sets of planes are fast. You get a very nice, very long speed boost on the torpedo planes, and you have a wonderful base regeneration time, which can be even faster if you build into it. And you have a decent amount of ship of ships of um, planes on the flight deck waiting for you. And yeah, that's about it. <laughs> uh, the, the downsides are the. AP rockets are very, very situational. Very situational. You gotta have ships that aren't paying attention and that are sailing in a flat in a flat line, flat broadside to your planes. The planes, we're talking like tier tier six CVs levels of plane health here. They're fast, but they cannot take a hit. The C V herself cannot take a hit. And again, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to build all your points and all your modules into the planes to make them even remotely usable, especially when you get double up tiered to tier 10. And there's no Italian CV line out right now, so it's not like you can, you know, train your CV commanders, your Italian CV commanders with this because they don't exist. There was an opportunity here, I think, to make this, the, the CV herself, give her, you know, maybe good concealment for her tier or a little bit tougher armor scheme and encourage you to play her closer to the action closer to the engagement to get a good cycle time off you know using these fast planes these fast lightweight planes that could get in the action drop their ordinance and then return to the cv and then you just get a good fast cycle rate going like that you know playing close to the action high risk high reward type of gameplay style with a cv like this but no, we didn't get that here. And I think if they would have done something like that, or, or maybe given it sap secondaries, or, or just a little bit something more, we could have had a 6 or a 7 here on our hands. But we have a 5, it's middle of the road, it's about where I would place it amongst the other tier 8 CVs. And yeah, that's all I really got on the Aquila guy. So let me know what you guys think about the Aquila in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 40,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Shark week this week on the Discovery Channel, by the way, if you don't know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, hope you're enjoying your weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.